All right, this one's uh, we have a unique perspective on. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Am I the asshole for telling my super rich friend she is unbearable to hang out with? Ooh, okay. Yeah. Are we the super rich friend? Is that our unique perspective? No. Okay. We're not rich. But <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. yeah. I had a fucking cup of ramen noodles for lunch <laughs> right before this. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I mean, it is really self-explanatory, but I'll give some details. My bestie since childhood, let's call her Jenny, has her finances secured. She, 35-year-old, built and made an exit from an from a business making her insanely rich. She comes from a very humble background, and I can confidently say that she has earned it by working for it. Okay. I come from a pretty average background and have a pretty average job today, and so do most of our friends. I don't miss anything, uh, and I do have savings. I can go on trips, etc. Her story is a fairy tale, and we are all super proud of her, but a couple of years ago, she was approached by an agency that pushed her to become a public motivational speaker Ooh. and podcaster. Oh, okay. So that's all right. Interesting. Since then, she has become increasingly unbearable to be around. And I eventually came to the point where I needed to tell her. Fuck. Fuck. I'm offended. I'm so offended right now. They're coming for us, Sarah. They're coming for us <laughs> humble podcasters. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I want to say for the record, I'm joking because I'm willing to bet this is a completely different case. Because if this is a motivational speaker, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm also like, listen, shots fired. Let's the be, podcasting let's be, community let's today. Be fucking, let's be fucking real. There's some podcasts I find annoying. I'm not oh, going to yeah. stand up for all podcasts. No, yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm willing to bet this this motherfucker is annoying as hell for sure. Uh, since Jenny got rich, she has always been herself, just in a more fancy package, and I have loved that for her. You go, girl. She has always been super respectful about other people's finances, and when we meet up, she's always up for whatever the rest of us can afford with. Even on her bachelorette party, she made a, a deal about making sure to do things everyone could afford. When pursuing her journey as a motivational speaker and podcaster, I had to revisit everything I thought about her. All of her motivational tips were related to not wanting to be an average person, Oh, and that anyone can become just as rich as her if they weren't lazy. <laughs> So, okay, wait, so this is also kind of like a griftery kind of thing, then, if, like, in person, she's, like, normal and, like, being respectful about the wealth that other people have, but, but then, then you're going on your fucking ridiculous podcast, yes, and you're just being a huge asshole, like, you gotta get, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, yeah, and you can be just like me. Yeah. In one episode, she talks about making sure to surround oneself with successful people to avoid looking at average people as a <sighs> quote unquote acceptable norm. <laughs> she even Don't look at <laughs> fucking normies. <laughs> They're poor. <laughs> you want rich, good, successful, good looking people <laughs> like me. <laughs> she even went as far as describing another friend's husband as her nightmare partner as he quote unquote lacks ambition. She didn't mention him by name, but other details that made it made us able to identify him. Over time, this worsened, and eventually other friends stopped inviting her to things. Now the podcast took another turn, and she started to talk about how to handle when people turn your back on you for becoming successful, and how, quote-unquote, <sighs> lonely it is at the top. What top? I don't know. I've never heard of this woman. <laughs> like, who is she? What yeah, are you like, what about? are you talking? Because, like... Top podcaster. What, what money is this fucker making? Joe Rogan. Yeah, like, come on. There's, yeah, there's like, you're yeah. not a fucking. Oh, this is, this story pissing me off. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it also, um, oh God, I, I have a lot of thoughts. I know. I have too many thoughts. And okay. there are, some of them are conflicting, but most of them are like, fuck this person. Yeah, I, but decided it was time to tell her that she's losing grip of reality. And that if she continues with being so judgmental in her podcast, she will end up just as lonely as she describes herself to be. Jenny got super pissed at me and told me she wouldn't expect this from her best friend and claims I have been jealous and felt inferior to her my whole life, which is absolutely not true. She tells me the whole podcast thing is her playing a part and that she exaggerates her opinions for reach. She thinks I am the one who <laughs> has convinced all the others to leave her side and wants me to apologize before ever speaking to me again. Help me here. Am I the asshole? Should I apologize? And I think, yes, you're the asshole, because this is what happens when you start a podcast. <laughs> Just 
is the natural progression of things when you start a podcast. Everyone who starts a podcast is a little evil on the inside. They start it. <laughs> And then you get 10 followers and you get a big fucking ego and you burn all your bridges with all your friends. That is. That's how it is. That's how it is. And you gotta apologize. That's how mafia work in the podcasting industry. No, I'm joking. No, yeah, this is a big bit. Yeah. Obviously Um, not the asshole. Okay. She's a bitch. Yeah, fuck her. (laughs) She sucks. Am I the asshole for being scared of my wife driving? Is she thoughts? Any thoughts already? I mean, on a, does she is she like scream the whole time? Or? <laughs> yeah. She, yeah, she, she jump scares you in yeah. your own. Yeah, <laughs> she has a Freddy Five Bears mask in the yeah. background. Okay, what happens? For context, my wife got back to driving one year ago after not driving for twenty years or so. Mm-hmm. She is doing okay. She made a few long trips, 800, 300 miles, and lots of short ones weekly. Never had an accident, and I think she got a little cocky. We had an accident last summer because I fell asleep briefly. <laughs> the, wait, so wait a wait. She should be scared of you, my dog. I'm sorry. I'm gonna reread that again. Catch the funny. Uh, catch the funny uh, word here. Yeah. We had an accident. I was gonna say, last you had an accident because I fell asleep briefly. The car was in bad shape, but no one got hurt. On the way home, my wife asked me to keep my hands on the wheel because she was a little scared. I told her it was ridiculous because our accident had nothing to do with where my hands were. (laughs) Dumbass. (laughs) She got pissed because after she asked, I got chocolate on my hands and had to remove them a few times from the wheel to clean them. I kept it short and it was no big deal. This point will be relevant later. You're the most distracted driver. You're eating and falling asleep at the wheel. <laughs> yeah, you're the you're most... doing everything other than gotta... fucking paying attention <laughs> driving, to the road. Driving around with the sleeping cap and a hot cocoa in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified of my wife driving because she's a woman. <laughs> and uh, here I am with Meanwhile, chocolate all over my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you're so crazy, dude. Now, on to the current issue. Uh-huh. She drove me to the airport so I wouldn't pay for a taxi. She was a little reckless during the trip. <laughs> for example, she was too close to the car in front of us. She went above the speed limit, used <gasps> the brakes too late, etc. Oh my god. I tried to communicate this gently during the drive. I told her to be careful when driving back home from the airport. <laughs> she didn't even have chocolate on her fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on. It's like, are you hour. even a real driver? <laughs> she looked puzzled and asked why she should be more careful driving back compared to right now, and my request made no sense. I let it go, but I got a few scares and jumped a few times in my seat after that. I was vis- visibly tense, and she got very annoyed, asking me what my problem was. I was truthful and told her that I was scared and she flipped it on me saying that it was how she felt when I removed my hands from the wheel after my accident and it was okay for me to ignore her at the time but now I want to manage her driving. I find her attitude very childish because I am a more experienced driver and it was one accident but at least she ended up driving more slowly and carefully. However, I feel bad that we ended up being mad at each other while I would be away for a few days and I wonder if I should have kept my mouth shut. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend he deserved to get humbled? Deserved to get humbled. Okay. We'll see. I, 18 female, and my boyfriend, 19 male, have been dating since we started college in October 2021. For the past, I'd say, eight months, my boyfriend has become very interested in UFC. MMA? I don't know what to call it. Ultimate fighting and mixed martial arts? Yeah. Yeah. He gets up at like 3 a.m. to watch fights and often has play fights with his friends one of these friends are important in this situation. I'll call him S. We had a very large group of friends. We all graduated in summer, but we all kept in touch over summer until now. Now these play fights, or quote-unquote spars, as my BF would say, were all fun and games, but they actually led my boyfriend to believe that he could actually fight because S, who says he does MMA, says he's naturally good. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> This led to a massive ego, and he said he wanted to have an actual fight. And one of our other friends' dad owned a gym with a ring and said that he could let him fight oh, there. Oh, no. Don't do this. I don't know if that was even legal. I also don't know if that was I don't legal. know if that's legal either. Someone will, and they will tell us in the comments yeah. down below. Thank you. I mean, if you're doing it legal, like, because I know if you're going to do like an actual fight fight. I feel like there's a lot of shit you got to do. There's a lot of waivers. You got to, like, you know, liability. 
Like, you could fucking die. Yeah, you could die. That's what we learned from fucking Creator Clash. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. Let's yeah, give you... Yeah, yeah, okay. S proposed a guy for him to fight, and it was a guy back from school I'll call A. S was friends with A, not close friends, and I knew A because we used to sit next to each other in class. S said he'll try to get a hold of him. A agreed, shockingly. Well, yeah, what the fuck? Why is everyone doing this? Listen, I get like the, I guess the male ego of like, I can fucking beat up anyone if I really tried. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you fucking can't. No, you don't you know can't. how you're going to act in a goddamn ring. No. I've seen, we've been to those events. We've been to fucking Creator Club. Yeah, guess what? It's, it's, it's Even if you shit. fucking train, sometimes the round's only going to last oh one fucking round because you don't even fucking know. Seeing Harley Morenstein in real life getting knocked Get his shit rocked of so the hard ring. out of the ring onto the judges' table it made me realize all the times when I was a teen, and I was like, "I'll fight you." No, <laughs> you <laughs> no, don't even. You don't even know what a real fight I is. Had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. Yeah, you I had don't no know why goddamn clue. It was even like that. I was just, you know, that's some shit you do when you're 19. Yeah, you don't Jesus. actually fight. I hope to God not. Right? Yeah. When A agreed, I did express some concern to my boyfriend multiple times, and he didn't listen. A was a quiet guy, but as we sat next to each other for a year, I knew probably more than others about him. It was pretty much just one of those traditional masculine males in a physical sense, worked out six days a week, rode horses and did archery, owned large dogs, <laughs> but was one of those guys that looked intimidating, but was actually a nerdy and friendly guy. Oh, but he has the power behind him, though. And the knowledge. Dude, you're worrying about, dude, the hand-eye coordination you got to get from archery. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll, I, I can't. There's no way I could. Dude, holy. F and you want to fight that guy? Jesus Christ. I'd run. Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't do this guy. I'm actually Oh my god. No. My boyfriend didn't like A or A's friends and neither did the rest of the boys in our friends so group. That's why I gotta beat him up. What? I, I always questioned my boyfriend on this as A had literally never even spoken to him and my boyfriend used to say that it's because A is so arrogant and thinks he's so good looking. This led to a what? lot of arguments with my boyfriend because why did my boyfriend care if other women were attracted to A when he had me? Yeah. Nobody knew if A could fight, but S said he told him something about how he had been training in some form of martial arts. The whole build up to this, my boyfriend was acting so childish, he'd constantly tried to insult A in a group chat that was, ma that was made. For who? Wait, no, when you do that, like, mocking, like, you know, the, um... <laughs> Like the what you would call it, like if there's it's like a big like fight, it's all for fake a, for yeah for the audience. Yeah, like when you when there's the Logan Paul KSI <laughs> stupid bullshit and they're just like chalking shit. He's just an it's idiot. all a show. None of them yeah. give an actual fuck about what yeah. they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a lie. You guys are being <laughs> lied to, and you're just like, nah, it's real. You're just taking it in there like At it's real. Face value, like it's not entertainment. Oh, God bless. Okay, he'd constantly try to insult A in a group chat that was made, and A wouldn't even open them 90% of the time. Awesome. Oh chat God. move, though. That's great. And I don't think he responded once. When the fight came along, there was only one outcome from the start. A was visibly towering over my boyfriend and had clearly bulked up. On top of that, turned out he could fight. My boyfriend lost in, I'd say, 90 seconds. Still longer than um, Matt, Matt Watson. Watson. Yeah. Got him. Got him. After I didn't bother consoling him, I berated him because I expressed my concern multiple times and he picked not to listen to me. He said, I'm an asshole because I should show him, uh, I should support him unconditionally if I really loved him. He now won't speak to me because he says I embarrassed him in front of his friends while he was vulnerable. He part embarrassed of, himself, though. I mean, listen. Part like, of me feels bad, but I feel like he needed to hear the truth. 